Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Diameter of Binary Tree. This is a really great problem for recursion. So if you're new to it, if you just want to brush up on it, you're in the right place. What is it asking? Given the root of a binary tree, return the length of the diameter of the tree. The diameter of a binary tree is the length of the longest path between any two nodes in a tree. This path may or may not pass through the root. The length of a path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. Example one, this is our binary tree and the longest path here, the diameter of our tree is three. It's either four, two, one, three or five, two, one, three. Either path has a length of three because there are three edges. You have edge one, edge two, edge three or edge one, edge two, edge three. No other path gives us that large of a path length. For example, if we were to look at this path over here four, two, five, it just has a length of two. Example two, this is our binary tree. We have one and two. Drawing this out over here, we see that we have a path length of one because we have one edge. And so our output is going to be one. So how do we solve this? For any problem, remember, the simpler it is, the easier it is. And like always, we're gonna start off with some examples developing our logic, starting off real simple. Say we just have a node of five. What's our output going to be? It's going to be zero, right? We don't have any other node to make an edge with. And remember in our definition, the length of a path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. We don't actually have any edges here at all. We have zero edges. So our output's also going to be zero. Now, what if we have the following problem, two and five? We see that we have one edge, so our output is also going to be one. This is very similar to what we did in example two. But thinking about this recursively, right? For any recursive problem, what happens? We start at the very top of the tree we go all the way down to the leaf nodes. A leaf node is just a node that has no left or right children. And then we bubble back up through our entire call stack to the top. So thinking about it in that way, right? We go all the way down to this node over here. And at this point, this becomes the same exact problem we had in this example over here. We're at node five that has no left child or right child. So we have no edges. And up until this point, our longest path length is zero. But remember, we want to bubble back up. So what do we want to return to our caller? We want to return the presence of our node that our caller can make an edge with. So at this point, at five, we want to return one to our caller two, showing that there is some node, a node, our node. So five is going to return a length of one to node two showing that on two's right, there is a path and it has a length of one, two to five, this is an edge over here. Now modifying this example a little bit, say we have the following example. It's the same thing, we just have an extra node. So repeating that same process, right? We go down all the way to our leaf nodes and then bubble back up. So starting at two, say we go down this path first. At node five, we see that we have no left child and no right child, so we get zero from left and right at node five, meaning at this point, our path is just zero. There's no edge right now. So we're done with node five and we want to return to our caller, but we do want to show the presence of our node five. So we're going to return one to two, which means two's right path has a length of one. Now doing the same thing for two's left, we go down to four. We see for four's left, we have a length of zero. For four's right, we have a length of zero. So any path that would go through four, that four would split, is zero. There's just no edge available. Meaning what we want to return to node two is just the presence of our own node. There's no path that we can actually extend to. So there's only one edge that we can make on two's left. And so on the left, we also get a length of one. Now at two, this is unlike the nodes we've come across so far. We actually have a path for both left and right. They're non-zeros. And the way to get the maximum path length at node two would be to just sum up what we have from both left and right, right? We're gonna go through this node two over here. So we do one plus one and we get a path length of two, four, two, five. We have two edges over here. Now making one small modification to our example before we jump into the code, say we had the following example over here. We still have that subtree of two, four, five to the left, but we're now basically just looking at example one. We already know at two, we have a path length of two so just writing this down, our diameter is going to be two. And what do we want to return to our caller of one? Remember at each node, we want to figure out the maximum path length. Should a path go through that node? So should that node split between a left and right? 
meaning we can only return one continuous path for both left and right, meaning we can't return this entire chunk as is. Because if we had a path coming down from one, it would have to do one, two, four, go back up to two, and then down to five. We don't want that to happen, right? We just want one continuous path. So what we're going to do is return the max of the left or right at node two. Now, in this case, both are one, so it doesn't make much of a difference. But say we did have another node. Say we had a node of six over here. So our right was two. We had a path length over here that was two. What we're going to do is return the max of left or right. In this case, it would be this path over here plus one, indicating our own node that our caller can make an edge with and return that up to our caller. In this case, if we did have these two over here, we'd return one, two, plus three to one. But going back to the initial example, say we don't have six, that means at node two, our left is one, our right is one. We're going to take that max, which is just one, add our own node to that to show that we can make an edge and return that to one. So say we return this path over here, four to two, length of one. We also want to add our own node's edge. So this is going to be two that gets returned to one. So at node one, our left is going to return two, and that's either four to one or five to one, doesn't matter. And on the right, we just have an edge of one. So that's going to be one over here, meaning at one, we would have two plus one, which puts us at three. And that's exactly what we saw in example one, right? It's either three, one, two, four, or three, one, two, five. If you feel like this logic is sort of coming together and you want to try it yourself, feel free to pause the video and code it up. But if not, we're going to jump right into the code. All right, to code this up, we know we want to return a final diameter. So let's have a variable for that. So thought diameter is going to start off with zero. And we know we want to solve it recursively. So we're just going to go ahead and define a function within this larger one over here. That way we can always access diameter. So def DFS is going to take in a node. And because we want to solve this recursively, there are two things we always want to keep track of, the base case and the recursive case. Base case, when do we stop recursing and return? For example, at five, if we call with fives left or fives right, the nodes don't exist. So we just want to return zero saying there's no edge, no path. So for that, if not node, if it does not exist, we just want to return zero. Now, what if the nodes are there? Well, if the nodes are there, we want to figure out what our left path is, right path is, sum it up and see if it's greater than our current diameter, in which case we want to update the diameter's length. So left is going to be DFS of node dot left and right is going to be DFS of node dot right. We want to see if we need to update self dot diameter. So self dot diameter is going to equal the max of what already is in that variable and what we get from left plus right. At this point, we figured out the largest path length we can make through a given node, right? So if we're at two, we know the largest path length we can do left plus right. What do we want to return to our caller? That's just going to be the max between left and right plus one to include our own node. So we want to return the max of left, max of right plus one. We just want to call this function with the node that's being passed in. So we're going to call DFS with root. And in the end, we just want to return solve.diameter. So let's return solve.diameter. Let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, before leaving, let's just do a super quick walkthrough with an example to go through our code line by line and make sure we understand exactly what's happening. For our example, say we have the following binary tree. What we're going to do is just go through this line by line. The first thing we do is define solve.diameter to equal zero. We define our function and call said function with our root, which is going to be one. And so we're going to call DFS with our root node, which is one. If not node, that's not true. The node does exist going into this next line. We're going to set left equal to what we get calling DFS again with our nodes left child, meaning even before we can figure out what we get in our right, calculate our diameter, we need to figure out what we get from this call. So from left, what are we going to get? We need to figure that out by calling DFS with node two. So at node two, we call DFS with this node. If not node, that's not true, it does exist. We're doing the same thing. We're now going to call two's left. So in order to get the value at this left, we need to calculate for DFS of two's left, which is four. Calling DFS with node four, we don't go in this if, we see what we get from left. So we're gonna call DFS with four's left, which is none. So calling DFS with four's left, which 
is none. It doesn't exist. We make a check if not node. That's true. Node doesn't exist. So we're going to return zero to be four's left. So at four, we figured out what our left is. We now need to figure out what the right is. And that's going to come by calling DFS with four's right, which is six. So calling DFS with node six, we don't go in this. If condition the node does exist, we're going to call DFS with its left, which is none, meaning our left output is going to be zero. And right is also none. So right's output is also zero. And we want to calculate our diameter. So it's going to be the max of what we have so far, which is zero and left plus right, which is also zero. So we don't need to make an update. It's going to remain zero. And what we're going to do is return the max of left and right, which is zero plus one to show that our node exists. So we're returning the max of zero, zero, which is zero plus one, which is one. And what are we returning this to? We're returning this to our caller, which was four's right. So we're done with six and we return one over here. Now at node four, we have a left being zero. We have a right being one. Going into the next line, we want to figure out the diameter. So the max between what we have right now and left plus right. So our new diameter is greater than what we have. So we make that update and we want to return the max of left and right plus one. We're going to go with the right, which is one. And we're going to include our own node. So we're adding one more to that one and returning two to our caller which means two's left is now solved for, this is two. And we can see that path, right? Two to four, four to six. We have a path length of two. Now we were in this line over here at node two, we just figured out left. We wanna do the same thing for right. And right is going to be DFS with two's right, which is five. At five, we know we have no left or right child. We know left is zero and right is also zero. And the max over here is going to stay zero. We return zero plus one to our caller, which is one two's right is going to be one at two we finally figured out what the right was we want to figure out the diameter if our path were to go through two so we're going to do left plus right we're going to do two plus one which is three and this is the path over here right six four two five and this is greater than our current diameter so we go ahead and update that and we want to return something to our color what do we return? We can't return both of these paths, right? We want to return the max between left or right. So the left was two, the right is just one. We're going to go with two and add one to show that we're also including this edge over here to our color, meaning we return three to node one. Left's value for node one is going to be three, and that's one, two, four, six. This path over here has three edges. What's the right? Right does not exist, so we're going to be calling DFS with none. And we know if we pass in none, we're just going to get zero. So the answer over here is going to be zero for right. Figuring out the diameter, it's going to be left plus right. Right doesn't exist, so just three plus zero, which is three. And we don't really update self.diameter. And we return the max of left and right plus one to our caller if it exists. So we're going to return three plus one to this function over here. We don't actually store that value anywhere, so we disregard it. And in the end, all we do is return solve.diameter, which we've been continuously updating. And so we return three. And that could have come either from one, two, four, six, or five, two, four, six. They both have edges of three, and that's what we return. So talking about space and time complexity, for time, we go through every single node. So if we have n nodes in our binary tree, that's going to be our output O of n. Same thing for space. If we have n nodes, our recursive call stack, right? as we go down and go back up, could be as big as the number of nodes in our tree. So that is also O of n. So we just went ahead and solved diameter of binary tree. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.